Hi all, this is Sammy at Avid CNC. This is an introductory walkthrough on how to set up and run a basic file on your Avid CNC rotary axis using Vectrix Aspire. We'll touch on our Aspire file setup briefly, but stay till the end for a more thorough walkthrough on using vector drawing capabilities of Aspire to create 3D models for our project, as well as creating toolpaths. If you already have a vector model for your project, then Vectrix VCarve Pro will work equally as well for rotary setup, toolpath, and G-code generation steps in our walkthrough. Also, if you like additional videos on rotary assembly or calibration, check out our rotary playlist. Today we'll be making a hand tool handle. You can make a handle for a lathe tool, a screwdriver, a file, a chisel, whatever you'd like. It's a great excuse to get familiar with your rotary axis and use up some scrap material. Maybe some gifts for your maker friends? All right, let's prep our material. It's helpful to mark the center of one end of the material to line up the tail sock live center later on. Let's fire up the machine and Mach 4. First thing we'll do is home the machine. Click the home X, Y, and Z axis button. Once we've done that, let's zero our A axis and click home A axis. We'll insert our first router bit. I'll use a half inch straight bit first. We recommend first using an end mill for the rotary calibration to make it easier to set the Y offset accurately, and then switching to your cutting tool to set the Z offset. Then we'll load up the scrap walnut onto the self-centering for jaw chuck. Slide and lock the tail sock in place close to the end of the material. Then extend the tail sock live center the rest of the way. Line up the point with the center of the material and tighten. Let's talk for a moment about how we're zeroing in our file. This will be a brief touch on your file setup in Aspire. Stay till the end for a more thorough walkthrough. It can be helpful to have your stock material sourced prior to creating your file. We recommend having your stock about three inches longer than the length you entered in the file, or at least for the first few times you set up a project on the rotary. This way you can have drop material on either end for the chuck and live end to hold the material in place and avoiding the bit or call it contacting the chuck. Our Z0 position will be the center axis. Our XY datum position will be the front left corner. This will indicate to the machine which side the X home is. If your rotary is mounted parallel with the gantry, then the Y position will be set with the rotary touch plate operations in Mach 4. We'll place the touch plate on the touch plate isolator and then attach the magnet and drive our spindle over so that the router bit is about one inch above and centered of the touch plate. We'll be sure to orient the router bit with the cutting edge toward the Y wall. In Mach, we'll open the Auto Z touch plate window. I'll point out a few of the updates with Mach 4. We now have a rotary tab if you have the rotary axis enabled. If you don't see this tab, we recommend upgrading to the latest Avid CNC Mach 4 release. The link is available in the bio. And if you're currently using Mach 3, we encourage you to upgrade to Mach 4. It will provide for full rotary support and has other helpful improvements for your CNC workflow. There are new touch plate icons to help you for selecting zero orientation for a three axis setup. Let's go to the rotary tab. We'll enter in our tool diameter and select inches. We'll select multi-axis touch off to set our Z and Y offsets. After touching off for Z, Mach will prompt us to rotate the router bit for the Y wall. Click OK. Great. Using the straight end mill makes it easier to set the Y offset. Now we can switch to our cutting tool. Now we can set the Z offset for this tool change. Once the router bit is above the touch plate and the magnet is attached, select Z axis touch.
Then we'll remove our touch plate for safe storage. Raise the Z-axis on the spindle and drive it toward the chuck end, making sure that the spindle and router bit don't contact the material or rotary axis. We'll manually set our X offset. Be sure your location selection allows for space between the chuck jaws and call it. In mock, we'll select 0X. Now we found our X, Y, and Z work offsets. Click Go to X, Y, Work 0. The machine will make a quick movement to the XY home. Now we can load our G-code. A little pro tip here, if you click Organize by Date Modified, your most recent G-code file will be set to the top to help eliminate chances of selecting an older file. We'll select Open to load the file. Before running, we'll check that our spindle will turn on. Click Cycle Start. We'll cut down the stock material on the bandsaw. For finishing your project, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Here's just a really quick and easy example. We'll make a fast jig to drill a hole in the center, slightly under the size of our tool, into the end grain. And after a little sanding, we'll slide on the ferrule. Depending on the fit, you can mallet it on or epoxy it in place. You can add this one to the toolbox and move on to bigger and better projects. Please check the description below for rotary assembly and calibration videos, as well as additional information for programming and Vectric. Thanks everyone for watching, we're really looking forward to see what you make. I'll see you in the shop. Welcome to our VCarve walkthrough. Let's open Aspire and go through our file setup. It can be really helpful to have your stock material source prior to creating your file, so you can set the dimensions in early. 
we recommend having your stock about 3 inches longer than the length you enter in your file, or at least for the first few times you set up your project on the rotary. Our Z0 position will be the center axis. Our XY datum home position will be in the front left corner, and this will indicate to your machine which side the X home is. If your rotary is mounted parallel with the gantry, then the Y position will be set to the rotary touch plate operations in Mach 4. We'll select our orientation. This will vary depending on your machine setup. And we have our rotary set up along the X axis. Then click OK. First, I'll import an image that I'll reference my pattern off of. Then I'll trace it using the vector drawing tool. We'll draw the top half profile of the part we'd like to make, since it's a symmetrical part, and we'll sweep this vector to create the model. Next, I'll draw a box that represents half the width of the handle, where it will slot into the ferrule, or otherwise the interior diameter of the ferrule. Then I'll scale my design to match. I'll set my design a little bit out of the way below the material box. Then I'll pull out a few guidelines to illustrate the length of my design. Now I'll draw a few vectors on these guidelines from the bottom to the top of the material, or move the ones from the left and right side of my material. Next, under the Modeling tab, I'll select Two Rail Sweep. Then select two lines that represent the length of your tool. Then confirm by clicking Use Selection. Now we can select the profile vector that you drew, and hit Apply. That will create the main model of our handle. We can view it in the 3D rendering space, and you can see the XYZ home at the end of the part. Now let's return to the 2D space so we can add a few more details. I'll draw a few more guidelines to show where I'd like to add my octagonal wrap for a London style chisel handle. Next we'll draw a polygon with 8 sides and set the radius to be half the diameter that we'd like the handle to be. Then we'll use the vector unwrapper and click apply. On the keyboard, click N to turn on nodes, then hover over the two tangents on the ends and delete these. Click N again to turn off node mode. Now I'll draw a few vectors along the length of the handle, this time on the X axis. Again, we'll select two rail sweep. Then select the two vectors we've just made and confirm. Then we'll select our new profile, the unwrapped octagon, and click apply. In the 3D viewing tab, we can now see our handle with facets around the handle. We'll draw a box around the area that we want to engrave and open the toolpaths window on the right. First, we'll create a roughing toolpath. I'll select a quarter inch ball nose bit. We'll use selected vector for the machining boundary and select the box we drew around our model. I'll give my machining allowance about 0.03 inches. We'll 3D raster around the X or Y axis depending on your design. One may be more efficient than the other. Then calculate. Now we can preview this toolpath. Then we'll create the finishing toolpath, which will have very similar selections. and we can preview this toolpath. Finally, let's create a rounding toolpath. This will help us turn the square stock into a cylindrical workpiece. 
Under Gadgets, Wrapping, we'll find Create Rounding Toolpath. Here we'll enter our blank size as well as our machining method. Let's go with Optimized Raster. Then select the tool you'd like to use. Try to keep in mind that a larger tool, such as a half-inch ball nose, will make this roughing work go a little quicker, or use the same size bit that will be running the rest of the program to eliminate a tool change. And confirm. The order in which your toolpaths are listed are the order in which they'll run. Since we have them all set to the same router bit, we can save them together. First, we'll save rounding, roughing, and then finishing. We'll use the Avid CNC Rotary Post Processor, which is included in version 10 of Aspire and VCarve Pro. Future post processor updates, as well as installers to add these to Vectric version 9.5, are available on our website. You'll select either the X or Y wrap. To determine which one we'll use, think about your part unwrapped in the machine. I'll have my rotary oriented on the X, so I want my part to be unwrapped along the Y axis. We'll select our post processor and save. Your G-code is now ready to be loaded into Mach 4. Thanks everyone for watching. We look forward to seeing what you make and I'll see you in the shop.